Good evening. Nice to see you all. And we are in for a good evening. Thank you. Much, much to share tonight. Much to educate. Much to learn. Much to be in touch and aware and in connection. And that's like our focus this evening, connecting. <coughs> connecting with much, and we'll talk about that tonight. But it's always good to refresh our minds. So I just want to just take you where we've been so far very quickly. We're talking about being to the mountaintop, aren't we? Who gave us a speech about that? Who else? How about today's celebration, holiday? I've been to the mountain. Remember? You sure? Dr. King didn't go around it. We can't go around it. We have to climb it. We have to be able to see the view. We have to be able to see the results of what we've accomplished and achieved. And we do that <clears throat> by being at the top of the mountain, not skirting our responsibilities, not allowing ourselves just to be, but to live proactively. To look at that mountain and say, my opportunities are there. My joy is there. My peace is there. It's my Mount Shasta. It's that place I can go and not only achieve, but to be and to restore and to rejuvenate. Every one of those terms, restore, rejoice, rejuvenate, <coughs> are my choice and they're your choice. They are your right if you choose to achieve. No one can do it for us. No one should do it for us. No one can take our place and talk our talk. And the most successful people in helping themselves and helping others are those who walk the talk. You understand? If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. If I say I can achieve, I achieve. I say if I will, I will do so. My will is in my power, it's in your power to achieve what you want to achieve. How many believe that? See, all of you say that, and now we act on it. It says what? This what? Today is the first day of the rest of my life. And it says up here, the year of solutions. Now you resolve it. Now you solve it. Now you change it. Now you move. We move into that realm that we've never been before, rising above Mediocrity, which Jeff talked about earlier this evening, didn't he? The mediocrity, mediocrity that we so often see people live <clears throat> is just that real comfort zone. We don't stretch. We don't sweat. We don't work hard. What do we do? We coast. We take the easy way. But we push ourselves, and we do it on purpose. We do it with intent. You have a calling. You have a purpose. You have a place. You can leave a legacy. Every one of you, you can leave legacies 
and circles of influence. Is everybody with me? No drifting. This is a big night. This is a huge set of concepts. And I want to share those with you, but I also need to just refresh your memory <laughs> that we also talked about how we think. And that, uh, that that first level of thinking is information. It's pieces of knowledge. The second set is that area of understanding where we begin to comprehend. Oh, I, I get it. I realize it. I understand it. I'm excited. And then we reach the wisdom stage where we what? We discern. We make the good choices. We choose the right path. We choose the right place. We choose the right way. Right? Are you with me? Are you, in a, are you on a journey with me? Yes. You know what? I'm excited about life. Are you? Yeah. I'm not excited about what was. That's back of me. I'm excited about what is and where I'm going. And sometimes I don't know. Do you? Yay or nay? No. Well, stand up. Say it loud. Do you always know where you're going? No. Nope. Thanks. Do you always know where you want to go? No, you don't know what door is going to open to you. If I go back here, and I do this in my classes, if I had a door on here, I would do it. But what I do is I open this door, and I walk through it, and I keep on talking, and I find what opportunities are here. I may not be on video, but I'm here. But you know what? I've experienced it. I've taken a new place. Do you get it? Right? Walk through the door. <laughs> Wasn't that good? <laughs> she jumped. <laughs> but I walked through the door. Sometimes if we don't walk through the door, we regret it. Right? We regret not taking the risk. Life is risk. Right, Melissa? Yes. Oh. oh, I got echoes. I got two Melissas. I'm glad you're both here. Thanks. Oh, that's all in unison. <laughs> oh, it's, so, it's so good to be alive. It's so good to see you healing. It is so good to see you moving forward. I see beauty. I see, what was it? I don't see any mokes. I don't see any titties. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'm learning. <clears throat> and then we know what we talked about. We talked about pride. And we talked about the I factor. And we talked about the me-centeredness. And we talked about selfishness. And we talked about how that is at the core, right in here and right in the mind, of what gets in our way. Oh, I'm okay as I am. They can't teach me anything. I've already been there. I'll just play the game and get through it. Maybe. But brothers and sisters, it doesn't work that way. You either engage this program 100% or you will not achieve what you want to achieve. And you may not be able to go out there and succeed as you wish to succeed. There is only one way to succeed, and that is to grab it and do it, and you keep looking ahead. To keep forward ahead. We talked about how we think, <clears throat> didn't we? <clears throat> we talked about what it means to really have the information and the knowledge. We talked about how we take the comprehension and our behavior changes. 
And then we talked also about the wisdom so that you no longer make mistakes that you made in the past. And those mistakes become triumphs. Those mistakes become successes. Those mistakes become beautiful smiles, hope, opportunity, the right to live in society at peace, free for your purpose, for your calling. And we talked about that you have a purpose. And, we, and, and your calling. <clears throat> so, and lastly, and, and our refreshing, you are here by design. You're not here to yawn. <clears throat> You're not here to mess up. You're not here to be staring off someplace else, because if you are, I will call on you. You're here by design. You're not here by chance. Your design is to heal. So let's take our, our next night together. And I want to start out with this reality that <clears throat> the mind cannot work on the reverse of an idea. The mind, your thought organ, cannot work on the reverse of an idea. So if you have success in your mind, you will succeed. You never tell a, be a best <clears throat> major league pitcher that what you don't want to throw is a high strike, high and outside, because you know what he'll do? He'll throw that ball high and outside, and the ball goes over the fence from the batter every time. So you, re you do not motivate yourself or your mind on anything but what you want. You don't motivate it by saying, oh, I'm on a dishpan. Oh, I'm on contract. Oh, I'm do this. I am not successful. I cannot do this. Because when you say to yourself, I am a loser, you will lose. But when you say, I choose to do this program, I choose to succeed in this program, you will succeed. No excuses. Does that make sense? You sure? Are you learning? Yes. The mind cannot be motivated on the reverse of an idea. I cannot hate someone and really love them because my mind will be focused on disliking them. So that's the first concept that I want to share with you this evening. We think in terms of what we want and we think in terms of how we do it and we think in terms of what it looks like when I've done it. When I've achieved it, this is what I see. I see success. I see a changed life. I see those opportunities become realities. They're mine. I own them. You all right? What did I say about yawning? You calling me if I yawn? I did too, didn't I? Oh, good. I don't mind if you yawn. I just, I just am so excited about being here. I can't believe how often we've been back. And every year we see success stories and we see new people. And we have just expanded our circle, our friends, our brothers and sisters, right? That's what you as a generation represent to me as one of your elders and as a professor you are the generation of people who have been under the influence of substances who can turn your communities and your peers and your families completely around. You are the generation that can do it. 
my university students are the next generation that they need to take on that role and become leaders too. And they've heard me say that, most of them. You're the, de you're the generation of success. You're the generation that can help heal Mother Earth. You're the generation that can do away with the extinction of certain animals and fish and, and wildlife and wetlands. And yet we continue to put junk in space and garbage in the oceans. And we're not taking responsibility. We'd rather be self-centered and selfish and always please ourselves instead of making it better for the next generation. You need to do that. So as we think in terms of what we want, here's what I want you to think. And this is, this is you, but me saying it. I am one with Habilitat, and I will walk their path and make it mine, and I will heal. That's the connection. That's the relationship. Habilitat's successful. Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah, many ways. But let's personify it. Let's make it a person because it is about people. Habilita is about people. It's about changing residents. It's about changing visitors. It's about changing your professor. Lynn, Donna, each other. Let's make it real. Let's make it human. It's not just a program. It is you. It's your lifeblood. It is your sense of thinking. So how do we make this even more real? We use our great gray matter and we say at the core of my mind, the core of my mind is where all of my change begins and then it seeps down into my heart. And my mind, it drives me. My heart, my heart makes me beautiful. My heart makes me balanced. My heart makes me a good brother, a good sister, a good neighbor, a good friend. But you know what else? You can also connect and be part of what I call the natural healing zone in our world. The natural healing zone is where I sense myself not only being on the path with Habilitat, but also connected to my Creator, who placed in me this core life mind, love, all the great emotions. But he did it out of the purpose of free will, where you and I have the right to choose the wrong way, but also the right to choose the right way. So he says to you, and I say to you, connect with the Creator. Connect with His wind. Connect with his sun, with his moon, with his stars, with his water in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south. Let that energy of love that is the divine flow through you, motivate you so that you are healing Holistically, mind, body, soul, you are complex beings. And you are loved by many, and you are loved by that higher, higher order. So let's take a couple of minutes, and because we are on mic and tape, stand up.
Now you got to speak good and loud because see that thing right there? It's called a microphone. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking about loud. I'm thinking about that if we all have a purpose, we're not here for nothing. I should just give it my all because we only get one shot. We only live once. Yep. How does that feel? I feel like being worth something. Oh. We're not worthless. Oh, did you hear that? Not worthless. You are valued. Always remember that. Good job. Oh, thank you. Good job. Yeah. Hi, Gary. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> How are you? What are you thinking? Um, mode? I'm thinking about being successful. Mm. I like your seminars. It gets you in the mindset of what you're capable of doing. Mm. So. You have lots of potential. Yes. You believe that? Yes. Look at that smile. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Yes, thank uh, you. You're for welcome. Coming. Oh, cool. I have met a brother that I really am loving and getting to know you better. What do you, what do you, did you share something with us that you're thinking? Um, I think a lot about dry, awkward poi. <laughs> And that's good. Yeah. That's good. Good food. Good food. <coughs> and it's good for the soul. Good for my spirit. Good for the spirit. Yeah. Poi is an important food for the spirit, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's right. Isn't he great? Yeah. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. you. Too, yeah, thank you. Hi. How are you? Gonna talk nice and loud. Okay. I couldn't be better. That's great. How about you? What are you thinking? I'm thinking that um, your healing is real. It's true. Mm. I'm honestly trying to really grasp onto it. I believe it, but I want to really feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So how do we feel that realness? By um, feeling the realness knowing that you have a place in this world not yeah. like before you know when um for me i felt like i was nothing already mm -hmm. but um i realized no ways i am the next generation you know and um the next family member that can make a difference you mm -hmm. know with my family on the outside and wow. go for it i will do it i will and you know we're behind you 100 percent. and beside you Always. Okay. See, good teachers, good professors always walk by their students. They don't stand in front of them. They walk with them. And that's what we're doing. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> what are you thinking? Um, I was thinking about um, what you were talking about earlier in terms of you can't um, teach your mind the reverse of an idea and I think that um, that's basically what Habilita is about you know keeping positive thoughts so when I talk to many of the sisters they're talking about how they need to maintain positive mm. thoughts and I think that's important good good job thank you how are you, doing, Gary? How are you? Good. what are you thinking um, <clears throat> I'm glad I'm, I'm thankful for everybody who showed up like um, I'm brand new here in this program, and like, it's great to see that like a bunch of people who like really care about this place, and I'm stoked to be here. And how about tonight? tonight? What are you learning? Yeah, definitely. What's something that's really stood out to you so far? Um, during the whole thing, I really like the the like mountain, and like that's that's a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I always used to go around my problems, try to avoid everything, mm -hmm. and. Uh, now it's uh, time to change and uh, face face all my problems. Yeah, and you see every and every time that you go forward, you're you're trampling on those problems and yeah. and getting rid of them. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Thank you. You sure? Yeah. All definitely. right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. <clears throat> it's 
So we talked about how we can travel our path with not just our brothers and sisters, but also with the natural zone. I would so much rather get high and have peak experiences on the natural than anything artificial. See, artificial is really produced by somebody else and not for your good. Artificial is not about realness. The natural highs, the natural beauty of this world, of when I see a hawk soaring, which happens to be my bird, from the Native American perspective, and that hawk is circling and he lands in my trees or he lands on my bird feeders or he lands on my deck or he flies by my car as I'm driving. That is not by chance. That is a message. And so I think to myself, how can I use that as a symbolism to, to my brothers and sisters here? And it, and it tells me that I can let my spirit soar like my hawk symbol and bring others along for the journey. Oh, snap, please. Oh, good, good, good. You see, it's like there is everything comes into our lives for a reason, a teaching a symbol. And what do you see uh, often around here as a symbol? What bird? A oh. hall. So rise up with the eagle, right? With wings on high. Nothing, nothing to hold me back except my choice to let go of those wings. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's so rich. It's so good. So you might, in your own words, your own thinking, oh, this, this man is just here to make me feel good, to, to say things, to, to make me feel powerful while he's here. No, I don't think so. I think I'm here to be a supporter of the messages of Habilitat. I think I'm here to be a supporter of the lives that are being rescued, of the lives that are being changed. I think I'm here by design. Don't you ever forget that you impact me as I impact you. You also teach me. You also become role models for me. When I get self-centered, I always start saying I. <laughs> when I get other-centered, I'm always thinking about you and my students and my colleagues and my family. I'm reading a book very simple book. Those are the type I get through the quickest. It's called Angel Horses. And these animals are being used to help treat autism, different kinds of mental health issues, different kinds of physical disabilities, because the horse's spirit unites and connects with the spirit of the human, as does the hawk, as does your favorite animal, your favorite bird. Have you really ever taken time to talk to nature? Have you really ever taken time <coughs> to appreciate the beauty and the healing of color 
of sound, of gentleness, of the breeze, of the stars. Every night they appear, don't they? They're fixed. Those fixed objects are for you and I to draw power from that source that created them and put them in place. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about cultures that started primal time centuries ago who had this knowledge and taught it to us and we have not taken care of what we've been assigned. And the more we get back in touch with the full holistic surroundings around us, the more we become the people that we can become. Your human potential is limitless unless you say, I can't, or I won't, or I choose not to. Here's another thought. Plant the seed of success in others and watch them become beautiful people. So how do we plant seeds of success in others? Meryl, what, what do you think about that? How do we plant seeds of success in other people? I think words of encouragement to edify them helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of plant seeds of hope in their life. Right. Yeah. So then they have a chance to grow. Yes. And really, really become more than they ever thought. Yeah. Do you think that little flower seed that is first planted thinks it's going to become a beautiful colored flower? It doesn't know that. But then you know what? To your knowledge tonight and an understanding tonight, when you pick that little flower and take it home, you have fulfilled its purpose. Whoa. I'm glad that's on tape. I've never said that before. <laughs> isn't that rich? That's awesome. Yeah, it is. But isn't that true? That flower doesn't necessarily know that it's going to become a beautiful whatever. And we watched a little girl pick one of those hibiscus the other day and give it to her mommy. Oh, thank you, honey. You know what? I bet that hibiscus was pure joy because its purpose had been fulfilled. Lynn and I had our favorite golden retriever for 13 years, and she fulfilled her purpose. She was our friend, our daughter, our sibling. And we never forget her. But she gave us something more than what she realized she could even give. And you and I can do the same thing. Do you know that? Somebody tell me what you just heard. What'd you just hear? Stand up. Want it on tape now. What'd you just hear? About the golden retriever? Yes. About it being a family member, a sibling, you know, a, a living thing that you love and cherish. Hmm. And what she taught us. What she taught you? Yeah. Now, do you know that you have more potential in you than what you've ever realized? Do you? Yes. Wow. Now there's no reason to stop. Right? Yep. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. You got him here? Yes. Why? Because you're a great person. Oh, wow. <laughs> so are you. So are you. Thank you. Yeah. Melissa, what are you thinking? Um, I'm just very grateful and appreciative. I like your energy mm. every time. Like even just when you hear that you're coming, I feel it and mm. I know it. And throughout the whole year, you know, you guys get brought up mm. in our conversations and stuff. And like you guys love us and I know mm. that, mm. you know, and even though you're far away, we still feel you guys all the time. Mm. And we love you, too, just the same. Oh, we know that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep, come here. Are you glad you're here tonight? Yep. Why? 
Um, it's an awesome experience, Shane. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of struggles. Uh, just having support to to get over them by by everything you're teaching us these past couple of days. Uh, something to keep, you know. Mm. Kind of tend to disregard a lot of a lot of things my whole life, but uh, something that sticks. Good. Did you ever stop to think that a flower's purpose is really realized by those who love it and enjoy it? Yeah. And just like that flower, you have the mind and the soul to be a higher purpose. Are you realizing that? Yeah. Maybe your purpose is to really change. Thank you. Welcome. Appreciate it. Brett, are you enjoying yourself? Yes, I am. Why? Because uh, I'm hearing some good information. Mm -hmm. so, like, uh, the main thing that I'm hearing like, throughout your seminars and everything is that you know, we need to find a good purpose. And since we find a good purpose, we need to utilize that to like motivate ourselves to make good decisions to get there. And then one thing I noticed you do, too, is you give a lot of people confidence along the way. Mm. That's good. That's one of my purposes, right? <coughs> a, a couple more thoughts that I'd like to share, and, and our evening will come to a close, at least at this point, for, for what we're here. But I want you to understand something, too that in silence is the opportunity to become more and more familiar with yourselves. Silence is an awesome tool for counselors, for social workers, for physicians, for any kind of therapist, any kind of helper. Sometimes we need to keep our mouths shut and listen. And understand that people need time. You need time. You need time to process what you're hearing and what you're learning. So sometimes, if it's acceptable to the Hibbolatap program and the leadership, these times of reflections are times for you to understand what you're being taught. And not just talk about it, but think about it. Put it in there, process it, mix it up, and say, oh my goodness, there's another level of wisdom, another level of understanding, another level of knowledge that I'm gaining. And all of a sudden, pride begins to get in the background. Selfishness begins to disappear. And what emerges is what I call that cocoon of humanity which has never been allowed to blossom or grow before. Wow. The cocoon of humanity. The cocoon of my being. I'm real. I'm authentic. I'm honest. I'm genuine. I care. I choose my best option. I choose solutions. I choose the first day of the rest of my life. I choose not to leave Habilitat without being a changed person. This is me speaking it to you. I choose to learn from Jeff. I choose to learn from all the other leaders and the staff. I choose to learn from you residents. And always keep in the back of my mind that I can be one decision, one choice away from messing up my life, my family, the professional image that I've worked hard to have, and my authenticity. I can't afford 
to blow it. And neither can you anymore. I'm here for a purpose, a calling. You have your own. You have your calling. And we know from good research that 42 minutes is the optimum time that a human being can listen to me or anyone else in most lecture type situations. We're almost there. Otherwise, you begin to drift. That's the optimum attention span. I am at 41.50 minutes. I have 30 seconds to go. I see beautiful people. I see potential people. I see what Jeff has invested his life in doing. He is perpetuating the Marino legacy. Isn't that awesome? And he's a brother. Thank you for this evening.